This is the Mission Cemetery Memorial Park located in Santa Clara, California. This cemetery has records dating back to 1864 and is one of the oldest cemeteries in California. There's also a veteran section in here dedicated to the brave men and women who served in the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, the Korean conflict, the Vietnam War, and the Gulf War. This place is very interesting. It's set up like a city park where you can walk your dogs and everything and jog and there's benches and whatnot. Um, very, very interesting place. There is an awesome mausoleum on the grounds here that unfortunately is closed due to what's going on in the world with the uh, whole pandemic and everything. I guess they've chosen to have their mausoleum closed, unfortunately, but maybe I can come back at a later date and redo that video because that was going to be a separate video from this one. So let's go look at this place and see what's going on. This is the grave of Jonathan W. Parr and family. He was born in Staffordshire, England in 1815. And it looks like in 1842, Jonathan and his new family, along with his sister Mary Ann Parr Booth and her family and her brother Job Parr and his family set off for America. They landed in New York and continued on to Iowa where they settled for about three years. Jonathan and Eliza had two more children while in Iowa, Charles Henry Parr in 1843 and Sarah Ann Parr 1846. In 1846, the group decided to head west and, and wound up traveling the same route and time as the Donner Party. A family named Graves actually switched over from the Parr group of wagons to take the shortcut with the Donners and can now be read about in their history accounts. So they traveled the same route as the Donner Party, which is very interesting. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know about the Donner Party, but it's a little bit about Jonathan W. Parr and family. As you can see around the grave site is they have these, these uh, barriers blocked because there's crumbling uh, concrete and whatnot around the area. I guess it's a, it's a trip hazard, so they don't want people coming in here too close. Another one that's blocked off because of extensive damage, Frederick Sackman. He was a native of Brunswick, Germany. He was a machinist who died of cerebral paralysis at age 55. His monument features a death mask carved into the headstone. It is made by pouring wax onto the face of the deceased to make a mold that creates the face featured in the monument. Well, that's kind of interesting. This uh, carving of him, I'm going to zoom in on it in a minute, is actually a death mask of him. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer, actually. It's about as close as I can get, but that's a trip, huh? The death mask of him. This is the Sarah E. Fox Memorial. I found a little bit about, about it right now. Let me read this real quick. The mausoleum was built as a memorial to Margaret Stevenson, wife of William Ch Chainalt Jones and their daughter, Sarah Elizabeth, who was married to Charles W. Fox, MD. It was presented as a gift to Santa Clara in 1914 to be used as a community vault for the placement of cremains. The Sarah Fox Mausoleum contains 1,000 urns and is not open for the public view except for special tours and occasions. Although the mausoleum is named for Sarah, she is buried in the front of the memorial in the Fox family grave area. So this is it. This was interesting. Very, very nice. And I was reading also at one point uh, when it was first built, it was used as a chapel also. One thousand burns in there. Wow.
interesting. I immediately searched Sarah Fox when I saw this because I knew this was something special. And this little interesting area is the Fox family burial area from including Sarah Fox, which I just let you guys know about. Um, and it's a small little stone gate or fence around it or wall. But I'm, it's locked. The little door to go in is locked. So I'm not going to like, you know, disrespect anything and go in. I know there's a hole right there, but this thing is obviously locked with a bolt. And I don't want to like, you know, disrespect anything or go in anywhere where I'm not supposed to be going. But this little uh, grave area is very interesting. It's got a little wall around it. It's beautiful. Very, very different. I've never seen anything like this with a stone wall around it I mean I could just step in but I just like I said it's obviously not the door isn't unlocked even though I could just easily hop this wall I don't want to on top of which there's also broken tiles in here so yeah I don't think they want anybody in here This little stone here, it just basically says it was this was erected by Sarah Jones Fox in memory of her sisters, Mary and Maggie Jones on this side. And there's a close-up of the actual deal. Here's another little grave area over here too with a little, a smaller wall here. Here's a stone that goes back to 1882. Hard to read, but I know you guys, some of you guys say that you like me to show the stones so you can read them. I found this one interesting. Very interesting stone. George Washington Moyer <laughs> and his wife, Mary Ellen. George Washington, uh, that's a middle name of course, but there you go. These are interesting stones, I like these. Oh, interesting. Oh, this one's interesting. Interesting. Got a little bit of a shade from the tree, so I don't know if you guys can make this out that well, but... Here is the Willett family area. Let me see here. This is interesting. These right here are two children. Born October 5th, 1862, Hattie died in June 17th, 1864, and Clara May born September 1872 and died July 1874. So they, this family had two children that died at like two years old, which is crazy. Here is the father, Frederick. So he was born in 1877 and he died in 1901. Find a grave says he was 24 years old. Very young, very, very young. And here is the Milliken family burial area. John Milliken. I looked up a little bit on John. Said, said uh, he's buried next to his wife Nancy spent childhood and early adult years in Ohio Illinois and Iowa he and his wife Nancy settled in 1852 in the valley on 80 acres near El Camino Real then called San Francisco Road and Lawrence Station Road the intersection containing farm grocery store and saloon became known as Milliken's Corner in 1855 a rural one room schoolhouse was named John Milliken School in his honor. There were four rural schools in the Milliken School District, which later became part of the Jefferson School District. And he's in here with his wife and his children, too.
thank you so much for watching this video. This place is a pretty good sized place. So I'm going to probably uh, be doing another part or two to this. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Therefore, you can be notified of all of my future uploads. I'm going to continue looking around here, fellow explorers, and try to find more stuff in here for you guys. Thanks again, and see you soon.